All right, welcome to unit six. All right, so it's kind of a bonus um, because once you know what you want, next step is to really get it and then the interview part, right? So um, I put together this assessment process for interviewing so you can find out where your weak points are and where your strong points are and then prepare for those, right? So let's, uh, let me jump right in here and share my screen. All right. Minimize. All right. So going through this, okay. So I want you to describe and be honest with yourself of what your strengths are and what your, um, uh, what some of your weaknesses are. This is the place to flush it out. We can't fix any problems until we know where the problems are, right? So don't lie to yourself is what I'm saying. All right, <clears throat> so if you haven't interviewed in a while, it's totally cool. Um, there are seven interviewing, seven of the most common interview questions inside of this, and that will definitely help you, okay? Um, so first question, it's gonna jump in here. Describe how you're currently interviewing. How do you feel before, during, and after? And how do you think the interviewer perceives you, okay? There's no wrong or right answer. I really just want you to flush out what those are, okay? Um, and then look for what you're focusing on. Is it the good or the bad? And I want you to start focusing on the good, okay? Because our, our minds will go right to the negative all the time, right? All right, so, Next question, what are your strengths during an interview? Another way to say this or another angle of this is what comes really naturally for you that you might just be brushing off, like, oh, I know how to do the strong handshake and, and really be with people and sit with them and have a nice conversation. That's an awesome skill, right? Um, and I don't wanna forget this, is that the whole interview process is really to get to know you as a person They've already looked at your resume. They've already looked at your LinkedIn. And they know you have the skill set to do the job, right? You've got the experience. They want to know you as a person. And they might have some technical questions too. You know, might have to go through that and, and make sure. But the interview process, by and large, is to make sure they like you as a person and they want to work with you, okay? So... <clears throat> know that and the reason I say that is because the goal of the interview one of the easiest and best ways to um, that I can help you is to your goal is to have a great conversation you should set a goal an intention for your um, interview is that you walk away going man that felt like a really great conversation you're not there to impress them you want to have a really great conversation. That's it. That's the main part, okay? If you leave with nothing else out of this, do that and it will make a big difference, okay? Um, so describe your strengths during the interview, okay? Describe what you think your weaknesses are, okay? So go through those. Don't beat yourself up over them. Don't get hung up on them. Just lay them out what you think they are, okay? Then if they are weaknesses, um, you can start Googling some of the like how to get better at blah, blah, blah. And there's a lot of great information on, on Google, okay? Um, <clears throat> now, here's a more particular question that is if you're coaching with me, you know, do you have a particular question you know you need help answering, right? At least if I can't help with that personally, you know, if you wanna hire me, fine, great, right, awesome. Um, you would now have the information that you now need to go start digging in and researching, right? Sometimes we just don't think about it because we want to avoid those questions. And then we actually never actually do the work um, to be prepared for those. So if you have any particular questions, you know you need help answering. And then go to work on those, okay? 
Now, if you could, next question is, if you could change one thing about how you interview, what would it be? Go with the first thing that comes to mind. What's that gut thing? Do you get all nervous, right? Um, do, do you stutter on questions, you know? What is that one thing? And then how can you best prepare yourself uh, to do that better, okay? Now, aim to have a great conversation, like I said. And one of the best ways to have a conversation is to be able to share stories, okay? So all of that information I just shared, all of those questions, you're just kind of flushing some things out. And one of the, the most important things to leave from this is having stories ready that you can tell them about a time where you were able to help solve a problem, make something better at one of your past jobs or a part of your life, and have a cool story, you know? Uh, it doesn't have to be like you saved a tiger or you saved a baby or you delivered a baby at work or, or you, you know, rebuilt the whole machine from whatever and saved the whole work day or the week or the, you know, the year. Don't worry about having to have some grand story. Just have a story and put details in that story, right? That makes a big difference. Anytime um, you watch a comedian, watch for when there's a lot of laughter. You know, when they normally get people is when they add in a detail. They add a restaurant name. They, they, they add a restaurant name. They add um, some specific detail about a story, and it grounds people, and it pulls them into the story, right? So go watch, you know, some, um, uh, some story, some good storytelling, and you'll notice the points when they add in detail. They add in the color, the smell. You know, what the person said, their name, specifically inside of this, you know, for jobs like it's great if you can name the client you worked with or name the coworker. You know, you don't have to give their, you know, their full name or anything like that. But you can name, you know, just put their name in there, their first name. And um, it just brings specificity, specificity. Maybe I need to take an English class. Um, <laughs> But it brings in that level of detail where people walk away remembering your story. And that's what really matters. Like they remember who you are. You know, they remember you're the guy or the woman, you know, that, um, that saved the day, you know, that saved the company $500,000 because you found a glitch in the piece of software. Or you're the one who, you know, stood up to the, the angry client and um, made a difference um, to them, you know. Um, whatever that detail is, just remember, have some stories um, from your career that showcase in detail how you've been able to contribute to those companies or those positions that may have made a difference, right? Now, having those stories, there is a way that you can tell them, and it's called the STAR method, okay? And I'm going to get into that in the next section. But uh, in this question, are you familiar with it, you know? Do you know what it is? If you don't, you're gonna be you're gonna find out that in the next section. Okay. Um, I hope this is uh, this section's been helpful. Let's get into the star interview method. <clears throat> now, the star interview method. There's other ones out there, right? But the basics of it are being able to share a story, or the interviewer may ask you certain questions, and what they're really looking for is your personality coming on here. They want to know how you're going to deal with people or situations, and you want to be able to share a story that shows how um, you identified it, what you did, and let me just get into the STAR method. Um, situation at hand, the task, um, the task, um, you know, what was the challenge that you, that you had, and then the actions you took, and then the results you got from taking those actions. That's what, you know, someone in HR or hiring manager is looking for. They're not looking for you to follow like the star method. They just want to hear the story of like what, what happened, what you did, and the results, right? Um, so keep that in mind in your stories. You want to be able to frame it in that, um, that way. You don't have to get this perfect, okay? Just think beginning, middle, end, you know, situation, task, actions, results. And if you have that, 
you've got enough so where you can walk in with any story and as long as you know, okay, what did I do? What's the tasks I did? What's the actions I took? And what were the results? And when you share the results, anytime you can share details, you know, specific numbers, man, we help sales go from 25% to 35% in a matter of four weeks because I implemented a few new ideas, man, that gives you, you look so much better in the eyes of the interviewer. Like, oh my God, this guy's, this guy or woman knows how to go from X to Z in only four weeks. We need that. Awesome. Great. Um, use that. All right. So um, in the next section, I'm going to go over some of the most common interview questions. And in these, I want you to be thinking, how can I frame these? in the STAR method. Maybe not all, all of them, but for the most part, just be prepared in what that could be, okay? Um, all right. So again, situation at task, situation at hand. What was going on? Set the scene. Um, the who, the what, the where, the task. Talk about the objective, challenge that you faced, things that were need to be overcome, the action that you took, um, to resolve the issue, you know, how did you solve it, you know, um, and then the result, what were the results of what you did or what you contributed, right, um, and inside of here, it's always good to talk about what you contributed, but also, you know, if you're part of a team, how uh, it contributed to the team, and we had success, and stuff like that, so just be conscious of that, you want to be able to showcase who you are, but you also want to show that you're a team player at the same time too, right? Um, all right, so seven most common interview questions, okay? So tell me, you know, why do you want to work for this company? And you should have done your research for this. Now, this particular one, I don't think you have to need, you don't need this, the, the STAR method. But do your research on the company. You know, how does it play into your skills? How does it play in you know, towards your passions and what you really care about. What you want to be able to align here is like, what do they really care about? What do you really care about? And how are they going to play together? They want to know that you're going to be there for the long term, right? So in the back of every hiring manager's mind, an HR person is, how long are they going to be here? Everybody knows people quit jobs and everything, but they don't, they don't want to be doing the interviewing all the time. They want to make sure that you can be reliable. And the more you can tell them that about you caring about the industry and how that applies in your life and how this position and that company really, really align, man, you show up as so much more passionate and um, someone that they want to bring on board, right? All right. So question number two, tell me about a time where you're a leader. This is a great time to introduce the STAR method, right? And... You're looking, just think about the things in your life, the times in your life at your career where you had to step up your leadership. Now, if you're a manager or a leader, you should have a lot of these stories, right? But if you haven't done that, think about outside your life. Um, think about, you know, if you're a coach or you're, you're helping Little League or, you know, uh, a time in my life where uh, that's not career related was when my mom was passing away. And I had to step, as a, step up as a leader in the family and really take care of everything that was going on with the estate. Um, now, I know that's not career related, but um, it's the first thing that kind of came to mind. <clears throat> so it can be another story that you have in your back pocket, right? If you're not, if you haven't been in leadership. So if, it's, if you don't have direct career experience as a leader you, and you want to move up, you can showcase other stories in your life. That's what I want to share want to get across. So question number three, tell me about the time you had to work on a team. Now, what's going on here is they're looking for how you work with people, right? You want to make sure you're focusing on how you contributed and how that benefited, right? Um, and use the STAR method here. Same, you know, really break down a situation or, or something where you were able to contribute to a team. And then have a couple different stories ready. You know, all right. Number four, tell me about a time, or not tell me, have you ever had to work with difficult people and how did you handle that? 
same thing. Go through the star method. You know, have a couple different stories at hand, right? Um, you want to avoid blaming other people in these in these stories. You really want to be seen as the person who contributed um, and had helped make a difference. And you also want to be humble too. You want to be able to showcase that maybe you're not always right, and you had a disagreement with a coworker. And that what you learned from it was, you know, you, you do need to take more time out of your day um, to prepare a little better. And what they're looking for is that you're able to work back and forth and that you're not egotistical, that you're not, you know, going to try to win every situation. Um, they want to know that you're one, going to be a contributing team member and um, able to be vulnerable, right? Like give up that little bit of information like, oh man, I just didn't do my best in this situation. But what I learned is that this, that, or the other in that situation. That's the key thing that they're looking for right there. I almost forgot that. They're looking for, okay, he, we can tell that this person's really human. They made a mistake, but what did they learn? You know, and did they bring that back? And, and did, that, did that help further their career from that? Because we all make mistakes, right? We want to know that we want to work with people who um, we know aren't perfect, but um, are able to take those moments in life and make themselves better. It's a great person to work with. All right. Same thing with tell me about a um, tell me about a time where you failed. Same type of situation. Same type of like format. You know, use the the star method. Um, and this one you don't have to absolutely use the star method but i think it's valuable just to kind of keep that structure um tell me about a time where you failed right and this is your time to really you know be a little vulnerable share what you learned and how it contributed to your life and how it contributed to the company um and what you did to fix it or correct that problem that's what they're really looking for here they're looking for a real answer you know something that really happened and you're able to own it, like, I screwed up, you know, I made that mistake, but here's the lesson I learned, all right? Um, question number six, it's kind of in the same, same, same um, area. Tell me about a time where you overcame a challenge, right? So you had an issue. This is a perfect one for the STAR method. You had an issue and a challenge, you know, was the action you took and what was the result you got, right? Um, <clears throat> try to align these towards what the company is up to, right? Try to align these um, and showcase how some of your specific challenges can benefit that company. Now, you don't have to play into it, you know, so deep that it's obvious, but you can frame yourself and your stories to where it's, you know, they're going to see you as, okay, this could really play well um, in that position, right? And the one thing you can do inside of the interviews is to make sure you've read the job description really well and you're prepared for it. You've done your research. You know what some of their biggest problems are, right? Because they're out to solve a problem in the world. And they only make money when they solve those problems. So the more you can contribute to that, the better off and easier it is to see you as a person who will help solve those problems. And that makes you more desirable in the hiring process, right? So anytime you can remove risk or judgment that you're um, not going to be the best fit, the better off you are, does that make sense, right? Um, <clears throat> and then question number seven is, tell me about a time that you had success, right? So same thing here. You know, this is your time to shine about, you know, how you contribute to a team, how you save the day, how you help, you know, raise stock prices by 20% because of the idea that you had, or that you inflated sales by 15% in a quarter, um, whatever it is, right? So have two or three stories lined up and practice these stories. So for all of these questions, have one or two or three stories lined up, right? Ready in your back pocket, you know, ready. And here's the other thing, like these are the seven most common, right? These are a lot of um, HR professionals will ask these and, and hiring managers will ask these. Um, but do your research, especially with Glassdoor 
and look at the interview process that's been documented by people out on the internet, you know, people that have gone through the process and they've told other people, hey, this is the questions they asked, you know, this is what they actually did, you know, and so you have a better process of what that specific company does, all right? So I hope this has all been very helpful. In the next um, unit, we're just gonna go over course realizations. And um, if you've got any questions in the meantime, feel free to reach out. I'm always here to help. Um, thanks and talk to you later. All right, stopping the video again.